Uh, oh man. Oh, that was the wrong pattern. That was the wrong key combination. Uh oh. Dave, what do you do? What do we do? What do we do in this scenario? What are the consequences of this? Oh, the alarm stopped. Oh no! Oh, that's that we did. That's bad. Oh, we're not saving the girlfriend now. The house and everyone within a five-mile radius have been destroyed in a massive nuclear meltdown. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the zany B movie cliched horror comedy world of Maniac Mansion. This is the first LucasArts game that was self published. It is a rocky horror ish, um, barbershop of horrors ish comedy horror game that really set the stage for all Lucas games that would uh, follow, as they all kind of took on this um, sort of comedy-ish approach, uh, this, this light-heartedness approach uh, to adventure games. Um, in this game, we take on the role of Dave Miller, shown here, and a couple of his friends who are trying to rescue his girlfriend from a creepy mansion slash uh, mad scientist. His girlfriend, the cheerleader Sandy Pants, of course. Um, no, that is not a, a nickname. Her last name is literally Pants. P-A-N-T-Z. Sandy Pants. I think if your name is Sandy Pants... Um, it makes me not want to know what's in your pants. Um, we have all sorts of characters to pick. I did play this a bit as a kid, but I could never get very far. But hopefully we're about to change that for today. Um, Bernard is one of the most notable characters. Bernard, president of the Physics Club and winner of the College... College's Geek Award. Um, he is in the sequel. Uh, so there's a sequel to this game called Day of the Tentacle, which we already played uh, as part of this series. Um, and so Bernard is one of the characters in that. In the sequel, there were only three characters. You didn't get to pick. So uh, I am going to pick Bernard, but let's just quickly see who all these other characters are. This is Sid, an aspiring musician trying to start his own new wave band. We also have Michael, award-winning photographer for the college newspaper. We also have Wendy, wants to be a famous novelist and is waiting for her big break. We have Razor, lead singer of the punk band Razor and the Scumettes, uh, which is kind of a dig on the fact that uh, the engine that runs this uh, game is called the Scum Engine. And we have Jeff, usually hangs out on the beach, responds to the name Surfer Dude. Um, they, they all sound intriguing, although actually I'll be honest, like Wendy and Michael here sound a little more boring than the rest. Um, this guy looks totally cool. Um, Bernard is not only the most well-known, but if you look at the cover box of the game, he's like, uh, making a crazy face, shining a flashlight in his face. He's one of the most recognizable characters. We gotta go with Bernard. I'm also gonna go with, uh, Razor here, because, uh, she looks like the kind of babe I would have been into in my younger days. Um, and I think she is also on the cover um, I think Bernard is interacting with her on the cover box, so it makes sense. Maybe he has a crush on her, she doesn't like him because he's clearly a nerd. So these two are going to go on an adventure together. Now, if my girlfriend was kidnapped and taken into a creepy haunted mansion, I don't know if I could convince two of my friends to volunteer, let alone get sort of uh, six on board as backups. In this game, characters can die, just like in Sierra games, but the nice thing about this game is if a character dies, you just get to, re to pick out of the roster of remaining characters. <laughs> Which, if again, if I was one of the, this, the friends of this guy... And, uh, you know, three of them went in, and then I got a phone call being like, hey, can you come join us, actually? And I would be like, wait, I thought you said you only wanted three people. He'd be like, yeah, but something kind of happened. We need an extra body now. I'd be very skeptical. Anyway, a an asteroid in the middle of the night crash lands in a field near a mansion where a mad scientist-type fellow is creating crazy inventions. And this ends up somehow spurring the events of Maniac Mansion to begin. Um, I don't quite understand exactly how this works, but uh, but I guess we'll find out as we go here. We got this sweet sort of early PC music going on here. Now, uh, a very interesting thing about the characters, by the way, before we kind of move on from thinking about the characters we just selected, is that each of them have their own skills, as you saw. And there's going to be certain events in the game that only some characters uh, can uh, can. Uh, Perform. Uh, hold on there for a second. I saw Dr. Fred take Sandy in there. It's up to us to get her out. Uh, this could be real dangerous. If anyone wants to back out... 
Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> I was about to say, I would totally back out. Don't be a tuna head. It's Sandy we're talking about. In the original release of the game, I think he called him a shithead. Um, but they censored it in later releases. I'm actually, I guess I'm playing version 2 of this game. Um, this game, believe it or not, the earliest version of this game looked even a bit rougher than this does. Um, but they upgraded the graphics over time. So, oh, I, I guess I'm playing the, the censored version. I, I didn't want to play the censored version necessarily. But, okay, it, it's not going to make that big of a difference. So, as you see, this is a point-and-click game, much like uh, Full Throttle or Day of the Tentacle. It was the first, however, point-and-click adventure game like this. So, we have these commands, these handy commands uh, down here. So, let's say, let's go ahead and read this sign. Go for it. Um, warning. Trespassers will be horribly mutilated. Well, let's go on in anyway. Um, now, this was a big deal when this came out, guys. Um, it, it, you know, b before this, basically, if you liked graphical adventure games, you played Sierra games, and the way you played them is you had to guess at syntax. You had to just sort of walk around, you had to just, just sort of start typing things and see if the game recognized. So there's the mansion, by the way, we're just sort of checking out what's over here. And so the, the idea of just clicking instead and not having to, um, to guess what you have to type was a big deal. It made the game far more intuitive. Um, and it gave you a limited number of options to try and puzzle. So it made adventure games just far more accessible. And indeed, even Sierra would start copying this format. So this really sort of set the stage for um, games to come. Um, so I think... Can we ring this doorbell? No, wait. Uh, how about... Okay, hold on. What is... What is... What is... What, what, what is a door? No, it's just a door. Front door... I think there's a way to ring a doorbell around here. Oh, there it is, doorbell. Okay, use. Um, or how about push? Push. Doorbell. There we go. Let's see if they will let us in. Let's try the, the gentlemanly approach. Oh, good. The doorbell. That guy looks freakish. He, oh, God. He needs some sun, I'll tell you that. So uh, what's our story when he answers the door? We're delivery men. We're here to, no, we're uh, uh, kidnappy inspectors here to make sure you're following all the rules with kidnapped cheerleaders. If you could go ahead and, oh, he's taking a while to get down here. Uh, it gives us time to, like, get our story straight, guys. D just let me do the talking, okay? We are kidnap, kidnap E inspectors, and, oh, he's going to open the door. Oh, we, we, we ran away. Can't you read the sign? Now get out of here! Hey, wait! You don't even—you don't even know who I am. I could be someone that you want to actually talk to. Okay. Um, so I guess that's not how you get in the house. How do you get in the house here? Hold on. Um, bingo, bingo, bango! We found a grate. We're gonna crawl. You know what? Jokes on you, buddy. You weren't gonna let us in your house. We're just gonna crawl into the subflooring, and I can't budge it. It's rusted shut. Okay. Um, hey, uh, what's this new kid button? Uh, oh, it's to switch to the different characters, right? Okay, well, here let's let's bring all of our characters over here. Now, as I said, we have three characters out of seven. If any character dies, um, we can get a different character. However, you kind of don't want your characters to die because they each have special abilities. Like Bernard can fix technology, I believe. Um, Razor over here, she can do musical type type things. Um, I think Mike is pretty useless, or no, Dave, the the main character there, Dave. I think he's pretty useless. Um, but all the characters sort of have different abilities. Um, and this is pretty cool, actually. This means that there are actually about four or five different ways that you can end the game because there are different things that each of the characters can do. So you follow non-linear paths, depending on which three characters you try to complete the game with. Um, by the way, this was a nightmare for the testers when they were actually trying to... Um, trying to figure out how to program this game, as you can imagine, because they had to worry about um, dead ends and stuff. I think I remember now, actually, there's a key under the doormat, yes, and Bernard's in the way. So let's have Bernard uh, take the key. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so as you can imagine, it was a nightmare to try and make sure they didn't create dead ends where, like, uh, players would get to a point where they actually couldn't um, they couldn't finish the game, use the key in the front door. Bing! We solved our first puzzle. Um, there was actually only a single tester uh, at Sierra who was involved in this game, and 
So in order to actually test the game properly to make sure they didn't have dead ends, you know what the developers had to do? They actually had to employ one of their uncles. I don't even think employ is the right word because I'm pretty sure they didn't pay him. And they mailed him a disc of this game every week with an updated version. And he played the game and, and told him about any bugs he encountered. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Okay, so we are in this uh, creepy mansion here. Let's go exploring with Dave and see what we have. Um, I'm going to try... So this this game is based off a lot of horror cliches. I'm going to start immediately start pulling on things that might be like secret doors and stuff. Sometimes you can pull on something in a uh, grandfather clock and there will be uh, secret things that uh, it will open up. Um, oh, look at this. We have a flashlight here. Totally going to take that. Um, what else we got over here? Oh, chainsaw. Can we take any of that stuff? Um, oh, well, my dear, I hope you're having fun. There's Sandy. We have to save her. Within minutes, it'll all be over. Uh, you'll be hooked up to my machine, getting your new pretty brain sucked out. Oh, God. Uh, you'll never get away with this. David and his friends will rescue me. You and your meteor can't eat slime. What? What? Wait. Hold on. This this cutscene just this just uh, creates more questions. She's just walking into the wall. Help me! Help me! <laughs> just repeatedly walking into the wall. That's how you escape a, a dungeon. Wait. His meteor is gonna eat slime. What? Why does he want to suck her brains out? I don't know. Let's let's get a knife. Find this guy and shank him. Very dull knives. Uh, they're glued to the wall what okay how about a chainsaw oh bingo bingo bango um all right from now on if we encounter that dude we're using a chainsaw on him use the chainsaw on the stove no wait use the use the stove with the chainsaw we got our we got things in the wrong order i don't think that's a good idea so but oh oh, oh, oh what's happening oh my god oh run what what the hell was that Oh my god, there's a monster in there, guys. Okay, hold on. Uh, here, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna close this door and hope that that thing never finds us. What the hell was that? Oh my god. Okay, Dave's gonna continue to explore. Oh, uh, I did read that we do need to... Okay, we're gonna send Razor outside, and she's gonna hang out by the mailbox. This is a very important task, guys. It, it, uh... It sounds very boring, but she's basically here to steal mail. Uh, at some point in this game, mail's going to be delivered, and we need to get a hold of it. Okay, I guess Bernard's going to do the exploring now. Um, this door does not have a doorknob. Can we... Um, I think I read about this, too. I think there's something that we can pull. Oop, no, 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 don't, don't go upstairs yet. Uh, exploring this house is the quickest way to get thrown in the dungeon or attacked. So, uh, hold on. Walk to over here. Um, we basically have to steal that guy's mail when it shows up. That's why I left Razor out there, by the way. And so a lot of events in this game are based on timing. Like, at certain times, things will happen. And uh, the creator of this game has gone on the record and saying he wished he had done it differently. He wished that he had set event-based uh, triggers rather than time-based triggers. Oh, what's in here? Okay, God. Are we, are we going to... Are we going to... Oh, here we go. Can we use this? Use cassette player. Oh, I don't have any cassettes. Okay. Um, one other thing I read, by the way, is uh, you don't want to you don't want to leave uh, people just sort of hanging out in the hallway that will get thrown in the dungeon. But yeah, the developer has said that he, he wished he had set up event-based triggers so that like when the player does a certain thing, then certain things happen rather than just sort of setting it up time-wise. Um... Oh, hello. Where at? We need a flashlight. Oh, we have a flashlight. Uh, t turn on flashlight. It needs bat. Oh, okay. Well, there's a dark room in there. Um, what is what is this? It's just a picture of a castle. Nothing. Nothing of nothing of importance. Okay, let's go back to Bernard here. Um, I'm I'm almost positive. What about these? Can we pull on these? Pull on the gargoyle. Oh, hello. Oh, okay. Um, I know how to do this then. This is why we have more than one body. This is why Dave recruited his friends so they could pull on gargoyles while he goes into secret rooms. See, we're making progress here, guys. We're making progress. 
Um, one other thing the developers have said about this game, by the way, is that they specifically did not want to punish... Damn it, we're in a dark room again. Um, they specifically... Oh, yes. Light switch. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Come back down here. Turn on... Light switch. Wherever it was. No, 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 no. Where the hell was this thing? There you go. Uh, the developer... Oh, what the... What is this? This looks like uh, looks like the Ghostbusters uh, tank that would um, store ghosts. Oh, it's a nuclear reactor. Okay, no big deal. Um, wow. Okay. Can we can we use a chainsaw on this thing? This is probably a terrible idea. This is how you kill everyone. Use chainsaw on nuclear reactor. No, it doesn't let me do it. Um, okay, walk. Where's the walk option? Boom. Let's see what else is in here. Um, oh, there's slime. And there's a key. Pick up the key. Oh, pick up every key you find in adventure games. Wait, pick pick up the key. There we go. Um, the developers specifically did not want to punish people for using uh, common, obvious logic. I think the example the developers used when they were um, uh, initially talking about this game is that there is a... Uh, oh, we found a fuse box. We can turn the power off in the house. There's one Sierra game. I don't know which one it is, but um, a carrot, the player is punished. If they pick up a shard of glass, they instantly die. And the developers of this game looked at that and said, are you freaking kidding me? In real life, you can pick up a shard of glass and you will not die. And so they specifically wanted people to be able to experiment with this game and not basically have these foolish, con uh, these foolish conditions where you can literally be killed by just doing something that's so benign. They called Sierra Games sadistic, which indeed they are. I mean, I love Sierra Games, but damn, are they, um, are they sadistic games where they will just punish you for anything. So, um, so in this game, you are allowed to explore. Um, and in the, uh, in the interest of exploration, let's go ahead and turn off all the circuit breakers of the house. Boom, we did it. Yes. Now we can all live in darkness. Okay. The, what was the point of that? Oh, great. Someone shut the power off. Uh, we're going to have another meltdown. Oh, shoot. Uh, how can I take over the world when I'm on a budget? I wonder what part of sucking Sandy's brains out of her skull. I, I like, I wonder what phase that that plays with uh, him taking over the world. Tentacle, front and center. Oh, the tentacles are in this. Hey, there we go. There's the purple tentacle. Yes, sir. Uh, purple ten tentacle at your disposal. These are the dudes from uh, the sequel, Day of the Tentacle. What, what I always found interesting is that in this game, like... Dr. Fred here and the tentacles, like, everyone is, uh, is, like, evil and out to get you. Oh, wait, there's, there's a radio? Oh, I have the wrong guy. I wanted to turn the power back on, because playing in the dark is no fun. Boom. All right, we tricked him. Can we pick up some of this ooze? Um, but all, all the dudes in this game are, like, really, oh, radioactive slime. Probably don't touch that. Yeah, don't touch that. They're, they're all out to get you. They're all mean and evil. But in the sequel... Um, they're all, they're all, like, nicer. Like, the only, only, like, Purple Tentacle and, and a few of the other people, like, are really mean to you. The rest are, like, pretty chill. Um, but in this game, it's like everyone hates you. I, I never quite understood that. You know another thing I never understood? There is a Canadian sitcom. How did he come through a closed door, by the way? He, like, phased through reality. He's like, ah, the, a closed door to, with no door handle does not phase me. Um, okay, let's try and go upstairs. Let's see what we got going on. But, uh, there was a Canadian TV show called Maniac Mansion that I always thought had nothing to do with this game. It, it starred Joe Flaherty, uh, Eugene Levy was like a writer slash producer. Oh, hello. Steel security door. Let's just wander around this house. There's, there's some home invaders here and nobody has noticed. What does this say? Read the plaque on the statue. Uh, C. Trove. Oh, great. Does anyone speak French? Can you let me know what's going on in the comments below? Um, oh, God. Terrible po uh, picture. But anyway, it had like a bunch of Canadian actors from SCTV, which is sort of like, um, you know, where John Candy um, and Catherine O'Hara and all them got their start. Um, it's kind of like the Canadian version of 
SNL. Um, and indeed, like Tina Fey was involved in the SCTV. SCTV came out of Chicago and Toronto. You can look it up. It's like it's considered like really legit in terms of comedians. Um, damn it, no power again. We need to find batteries for this flashlight. But um, yeah, so those people were involved in this show. It's basically, ooh, sweet an arcade. It, it's basically a show about uh, a mad scientist family. So it kind of seems like it might sh share some of the themes of this game, but it has nothing to do with this game specifically. And it was always a huge letdown to me because even though I wasn't good at this game as a kid, I liked the idea of this sort of cheesy B horror sci-fi comedy kind of thing. And uh, it turns out the, oh, I want to play this game. Can we play any of these games? That would be awesome. Or fix them. Fix the coin box. Just use use die enemy die game. Man, these games sound fun. I want to play these. Oh, man. It's too bad Lucas didn't uh, actually program. LucasArts didn't program games for each of these. You can play, like, mini games within it. We need to find quarters. Our new mission is finding quarters, guys. Let's pull this poster off the wall. Uh, pull the Zach McCracken poster. Wait, what is Zach McCracken? What is Zach McCracken? What the hell is Zach McCracken? I want to know. That guy sounds badass. Okay, let's see. Okay, that and that was a dark room. Okay. Um, but the Maniac Mansion show, apparently it was based on this. It was. It's just that when they told the concept to Eugene Levy, he was like, no, I'm going to like remold it and turn it into... Um, oomph? What the hell does that mean? I'm going to turn it into more of like a typical sitcom. Oh, God, a tentacle. A tentacle. Can we talk to him? Is there a talk, is there a talk option? Can we read him? Look, read the tentacle. Try and decipher what he wants. No? Um, there's literally no talk option. I, I Communicate. Make first contact. How do we do this? Let's unlock him. No? Oh, we just try and walk past him. You can't pass until you feed me. Oh. What What do you like to eat, buddy? I like how he says you can't pass until you feed me. I walk past him. And then my guy decides to voluntarily walk backwards. Let's see if we can open the door. No, he doesn't let me. <laughs> it's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm literally listening to him, but I could just ignore him and do it. Like, he's not doing anything to force me back. My guy's just a really nice guy, I guess. He really likes to follow the rules. Anyway, with the Maniac Mansion TV show, yeah, it was a show that, like, I never really found funny as a kid. It was really cheesy and kind of dumb. And it's, it's, when I found out, when I was getting ready to make this video, I found out that it was supposed to be based on this game, and technically it is, but it, uh, it obviously is, is nothing like this. And so it's kind of a huge letdown, I think. And you can go look it up. Maybe you'll find it funny if you, if you look it up. Maybe you'll be like, no, oh, Jay, you're wrong. This is actually a pretty funny, insightful show. I mean, I haven't seen it in years. Maybe as an adult, I'd enjoy it. But yeah, it was, ba it was a Canadian TV show based on uh, this Maniac Mansion adventure game here. But it kind of has nothing to do with it at the same time. Um, okay, we have paint. Let's see if we can... Um, oh, we got paint remover. Sweet. Pick up the paintbrush. We're going to need that too. Let's just loot everything. Bowl of wax fruit. Why not? Let's open this crate of like, I hope that's purple paint coming out of it, not like purple slime. Um, I wonder what was being painted here. Oh, it was a ball. A purple ball. Interesting. And okay, we have paint remover. I wonder if there's something that was freshly painted. God, that was, oh, it's a nurse. I was going to say, that was a skeleton or whatever that chased me in the kitchen. Um, Actually, okay, I guess that's, uh, so I think the mad scientist guy here is Dr. Fred, and I'm pretty sure that's his wife, uh, Nurse Ethel, something like that. Um, match made in heaven, right, guys? Like, a blue-eyed, or, or blue-skinned skeleton doctor man married a blue-skinned skeleton nurse lady. Totally Rocky Horror Picture Show-ish which uh, is a, a movie that I absolutely hate. <laughs> I'm not into musicals, and I got tricked into watching Rocky Horror, which is just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It is it is a bizarre movie. I don't know why anyone likes it. I mean, I'm sure people do like it, so whatever. I'm not judging. Like, you can like it if you want, but it is definitely not for me, and I do not like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh... It, when I didn't know anything about it as a kid, it seemed kind of interesting. Like, the iconography and, like, the, uh, the you know, what, what it looks like seems interesting, but it's just uh, not my kind of thing. 
There we go. We're doing something here. What the hell was that? All right, let's try turning on the TV. Clink. What do we got? Let's watch an episode of Seinfeld. Three guys who publish anything. Hi, all. We're budding writers, musicians, and game designers. I'm Mark Eater. Uh, my company will publish anything. Just mail it to the address shown below. And don't forget the stamp. <laughs> we get paid in stamps, people. If you forget that thing, we're just going to mail it right back to you. Publish anything. Ugh, there's like bloody hands all over the wall. Some Something dark went down here, guys. Something dark and evil. Okay, so I'm kind of running out of things to do here. So I'm going to go try and go back into the kitchen and hopefully... Um, Edna, Edna, that's the name of the character. Um, I did do some background reading about this game and, and sort of broadly speaking, um, sort of uh, the broad strokes of what to do. Uh, because if I go into these adventure games totally blind, I get I make no progress. But I think Edna is gone. And, um, and so we have to go in here. I've got my chainsaw. She is here. Okay, she's not here. That's good. You know, if she did start to chase me, I'm not convinced I could click use chainsaw and then click on her fast enough for it to actually do something. So I don't, this is definitely not an action game. But I am walking around with a bloody chainsaw. This this would be a terror if, if a home invader showed up and he was he or she was walking around your house with a bloody chainsaw, that would be freaking terrifying. Um, I do, however, know that uh, no matter how how stuck it seems like we are. Um, oh, we got Pepsi. We got some. We got we got some early product placement people. Um, I do know that uh, no matter how stuck it may seem, sweet batteries. Finally, it may seem like we are. Um, they do not have dead ends in this game. Um, I mean, it is. It's it's again kind of the opposite mentality of Sierra. Sierra had dead ends in their game. You could die by doing just benign things. So this game is far more forgiving. Um, and it would follow a trend in later Lucas Arts games, where I find Lucas Arts games are far less likely to have any dead ends at all or screw players over. Whereas Sierra games, um, they just take a different mentality with that. They're harder. They, they are more sadistic. Um, but we do love them for it. Um, it's just a different type of, of gameplay. So, um, okay, use the old batteries and the flashlight. Boom. I think we did it. Okay. Um, being old batteries. Oh, gee, I'm hungry. Uh oh, that does not bode well. Um, is there a way? We better get the hell out of here. Um, I have a feeling he's gonna come in, and he's not gonna be too. Maybe we can try and use the chainsaw on him. I I know this won't work. In fact, actually, I'm being stupid. Let's not even try and use the chainsaw. Let's just get the hell out of here. Cheese it. Literally cheese it with the cheese. Ooh, look. Uh oh, maybe he's coming in here. Um. Okay. Very quickly, pick up. What is this? A piece of meat? Pick up the old rotting turkey. Oh god, he's coming! Okay, we we got we just got a bail. Oh wait, maybe maybe he's stopping. Where's the cheese? I got it, buddy. I ate your cheese. Okay, he seems to be returning from whence he came. We're just taking all their old food. I mean, there was a rotting turkey in here, buddy. You could have taken that. Uh, pick up, pick up the candle. Okay. He's carrying a turkey and a rotting ham, and the candle is too heavy. What is this? A gravy stain. All right. This is a long dining room table, by the way. It's like the one in uh, the Michael Keaton Batman, the like joke one, where he's like having uh, soup with uh, Kim Basinger. Um, ooh, ooh, tentacle food. That's tentacle chow. Okay, we can feed the tentacle, making progress. What are these? Fruit drinks. Gimme, gimme, gimme. This guy... Man, this this feels like you, you know the the have you guys ever gone into a grocery store and uh as soon as you know you, you feel like you don't need to get very much stuff so like you grab a basket or you don't even grab a basket and oops I meant pick up. Pick up this. Oh, or just drop it on the grate. Very good. I guess we were supposed to do that. Um, but do you guys ever have this experience? You go into, we just looted their whole uh, pantry. You go into the grocery store, you think, I don't need very much. And you start picking up this and that. And before you know it, you're like juggling like a, a, a huge pile of groceries. And you're like, I'm an idiot. I should have taken a basket. Or sometimes you did take a basket and you're still juggling by the end of it. And you're like, I should have taken a buggy. 
Like that happens to me all the time. I'm running into the grocery store. I think I only need one thing. I'm not getting a basket. And then I come up to the cashier and I'm literally like barely holding a giant pie. It looks comical how much stuff I'm holding in my arms. Look at look at all the stuff he's holding. This is what's happening to this guy right now. Flashlight, chainsaw, silver key, can of Pepsi, uh, cheese, old rotting turkey, tentacle chow, weak old roast, fruit drinks, glass jar, and canned goods. And he's got that silver key, so we're going to try and use the silver key in door. Boink! We are in! Oh! They locked their pool up. Let's see what we got going on over here. Ooh, a radio! Can we just take it? Pick up the radio. I can't reach it. Get in the water. Walk to the swimming pool. Jump in with your clothes on, buddy. Pretend you're in like a 90s commercial and have a friend push you in. I don't want to get wet. Wow, this this is like a guy who the stakes for him rescuing his girlfriend end at like going into water. He's like, well, I do want to rescue my girlfriend. And that radio might be essential, but I'm, I'm already fully dressed. I don't want to get wet or anything. I mean, I want her to live, but not at the cost of having to go into a pool. Where are we now? We're like in the guy's backyard. Garage door. Open the garage door. I can't budge it. Okay, we probably need a garage door opener of some kind. All right, all right. Well, this is this is good. We're making progress. Um, another thing this game reminds me of, by the way, is have ever, any of you guys played Hugo's House of Horrors? Um, this game totally reminds me of Hugo's House of Horrors. Hugo's House of Horrors is uh, like an indie adventure game uh, that was made in the 90s. It was a shareware title, so uh, it got passed around a lot. Um, and you could play like the first part of it or whatever, the first game. Um, it's basically very thematically similar to Maniac Mansion here. It's about being stuck in like a haunted mansion. Um, and there were like ghosts and ghoulies and, and sort of supernaturally mad scientist-y things. Um that you would encounter, but it was text-based, much like a Sierra game. So you would type in what you want it to do. You wouldn't click on these handy little, uh, uh, handy little icons here. Um, that is a game that I played a hell of a lot more than Maniac Mansion. I'm kind of winging it with Maniac Mansion. Now that we have the tentacle chat, let's go see what we can do with this uh, tentacle dude. I'm kind of winging it with Maniac Mansion because I don't fully know what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, even with Hugo's House of Horrors, I mean, it's not like I knew what I was supposed to be doing, but uh, I had a friend. Oh, hello, Bernard. Standing right there, very awkward. Wait, where? Oh, it was behind this closed door, right, that uh, we found the tentacle. Um, I didn't know what to do in Hugo's House Horrors either, but uh, I had a friend, this was back before the days of the internet, We would every day after school we'd play it, and we'd try and get a little further, a little for further, and, and figure out uh, what was going on. Um, and we got pretty far, I would say. I don't know if we ever actually finished it, but we might have. We might have actually finished it. Um, okay. Give. Okay, how about give tentacle chow to the green tentacle? Thanks. More food. What? I just fed you. Okay, hold on. We can do this. How about we give the weak old roast to the green tentacle? More food. Dear God. Where do, how does a tentacle even eat? It's an arm. It must not be a real tentacle. You can have an old rotting turkey. More food. Oh my God. How about cheese? Do you like cheese? Some cheese to wash that down? More food! How about uh, canned goods? Eat the cans! More food! Oh my god. Are we supposed to... I feel like we're screwing ourselves over. We might be getting rid of, like, essential items here. More food. Do you like Pepsi? I'll just give it all to you. No thanks, it makes me burp. Okay, maybe... Maybe he won't accept things that we need for other purposes. So that's okay, then. I gave you, I gave you so much food, dude. And while well, jokes on you, all that meat was rotten. You're gonna be barfing it up tonight. You're gonna have a terrible night, my friend. You just ate a whole bunch of rotten meat. Um, okay, well there is a dark room over here, and we have a flashlight, so maybe we'll give this a try. So we'll pop into here. First of all, let's see if there's a light switch. Blackboard, medical chart, diagram, desk, exam, skeleton. Oh, interesting. I like how he knows all this. He can't see a thing in front of him, but he's like, I sense there is a skeleton, a blackboard, medical chart. Like, what is he, like a freaking psychic? Turn on our flashlight. Do it. Oh, look at this. Interesting. Okay, quick, light switch. Light switch. Light switch. Nothing. Okay, it turns out that we actually need to get some water out of the swimming pool here. 
And we need to send good old Bernie. Um, he's just been hanging out, chilling in the uh, TV room. He was watching an episode of Seinfeld this whole time. Um, the lazy lout. We're here trying to save my kidnapped girlfriend, and you are just wa you're just spending time watching the sign. Actually, we're going to open up this old-fashioned radio. Boom, and we're going to go ahead and pick up its innards. Because, hey, why the heck not? Um, Bernard can do something technical with it later on. Maybe like a rocket raccoon, he can like uh, build some kind of like crazy weapon or something. Okay, let's try the... Let's let's use his psychic senses to feel what's in this room. Oh, I sense a lamp. Oh, wait, actually, that might be useful. Let's see what else. Oh, oh he sucks. A staircase. The other guy was seeing, like, medical charts, all sorts of stuff. Um... Old Bernie just sees... I mean, I guess the lamp is more useful. Okay. Oh, a library. Hello. Uh, maybe he was overloaded by what he sensed because all the books were interfering. It was an interference problem, I swear. He is just as psychic as uh, Dave. Um, oh, let's uh, use the phone. Hello. It seems to be broken. Okay. You know who we haven't seen in a long time? Razor. She's just hanging around out here. Just like being like, man... You asked me to help save your girlfriend. I thought I would be playing a more active, integral role. My role has literally just been to stand outside. I guess she's the lookout. I mean, we are we are doing a little light B and E here. We have broken into their house. We have broken and entered. We've done both. So these guys could totally be arrested by the police. Forget about being thrown in the dungeon. Um, if they catch us, they should just call nine one one and and put an end to it. Although I guess when you are what? The staircase is out of order. I'm going to pick up that sign. Oh, I can't... What, what do you mean you can't pick it up? Just take it away and use the staircase. Are you serious? Stairs can't be out of order, man. Just climb the freaking stairs, you nerd. Oh, my God. Um, I guess when you're trying to take over the world, though, calling the police is not an option you have. Which would explain why they have a dungeon in their house. I mean, like, what kind of house has a dungeon in the basement? Uh, maybe it's a converted rec room. They just put a lock on the door, and it's, like, uh, now a dungeon, officially. Oh, we have a cutscene. Daddy's been acting very strangely ever since his secret project in the lab. Yeah, so? Well, Mommy, I'm worried about... How old is this kid? He looks like he's 40. He hasn't been at dinner in fi for five years. Yeah, so? And he's been bringing those bodies into the basement late at night. Oh, God, he's a, he's a sadistic murderer. What's your point, Dad? I'm a very busy lady. Imagine she has a terribly shrill voice. Look at him. Never mind. The guy, that that chi that quote unquote child is like in his fifties. There's no way. Um, also, look at this. There's a key up here. What is key? Can we pick it up? Can you can you climb? Here's here's an idea. Climb on the couch to reach the key. I can't reach it. You know, if I was in a, a weird hauntedish mansion. And my friend's girlfriend was kidnapped, and I saw a key dangling from a chandelier. I would take this radio, and I would throw it. Where's, where's hurl this object at that object? Shatter their freaking chandelier and get the goddamn key. Also, is there anything under the couch? It kind of looks like maybe there is. Couch, couch, no. Nothing. Also, look at this, guys. Bernard has used his keen senses of perception to detect a loose panel. You know how to go ahead and open that. And what do we have here? But a cassette tape. Yes. All right, so now we have a cassette. Ooh, maybe we can play it in that player. Let's see what happens. Let's just for, for kicks. I'm sure it's a more complicated puzzle than this. The one thing about this game is, like, there's all these objects all over the place, and you have no idea how anything really relates to anything else. I, I feel like adventure games have gotten a lot more obvious with time. Um, that did, that did absolutely nothing. Oh, wait, can we turn on the cassette tape? The cassette player? It's blank. Oh, okay. So we have a blank cassette tape. I don't know what the purpose of this is, but we still have it. Oh, God, turn it off. I feel like adventure games have gotten a lot more obvious where, uh, characters we put in, like, a certain relatively confined environment. It might be, like, four or five rooms, and there are, like, four or five objects and four or five puzzles, and they have to figure out how to solve the puzzles with the objects, and then they graduate to, like, the next level or the next section or the next stage whereas in this we're pretty much in the entire house with all the objects available to us right from the get-go 
And we have no idea how anything links up. And Sierra games are like this too. So I think it's a symptom of early adventure games where it's like it's so open almost that it can be very sort of confusing of where to go or, or how anything fits together. And so early adventure games, I kind of feel like have a different feel than modern adventure games. I think modern adventure games feel like you're kind of going on a story, whereas some of these older adventure games, it feels like you're just in a giant world, more like a sandbox. You're in a giant world with lots of things, and you kind of just have to figure out how everything kind of relates um, to other things. So um, that's, that's just how uh, it is. Um, we have pool water. I wonder if we could... Uh, I think we can fill it up with the tap, too, actually. I seem to recall that being a possibility. But I guess it's too late now. You want to know another interesting bit of trivia? This door here, this locked padlock door, is actually part of the copy protection in the game. So normally... Um, I wonder if we can even use it. Yeah, so normally you have to, like, enter in a key code. And if you enter the access code correctly... Oh, shoot. Why did I go into this? Oh, no. If you enter the code in incorrectly, it will, like, lock the door and it could explode the house. Oh, dear God. What have I done? Why did I do this? I just wanted to show you guys. <laughs> okay, I literally had to Google this because I, I don't know what will happen. Obviously, the door was open when we got to it, meaning I had a version of the game where you don't need this uh, copy protection. But I don't know what happens if I enter the wrong code. It could explode the house. So we're going to go here and go section 1, C18. This. Oh, no. I entered the number from the wrong row. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now what we enter. Oh, no. There's an alarm. Run. Run. I don't know what's happening. Run, 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 you fool! You might have killed us all! Um... What? Ah! Oh, there's a tentacle! Oh, he's scared of it! Okay, um... Hold on, maybe... Maybe we can go and fix things? We, we've, uh... I think we've set off an alarm and it's, in the, it's like, sent a, a message to Allstate or something they're gonna send. Or, not Allstate, whoever does the, uh, home security systems. Okay, D8. Read the thing correctly this time, Jay. Okay, it's this... This, this, this. Oh, sweet. Oh, no! No, I did it right! I did it right! Is, are there any consequences to this? Oh, God. Section 6. C3. Okay, here we go. Third time's a charm, right, people? This one, this one, this one, this one. Oh, thank God we disabled it. What was that? I just heard a sound. Can't be good. Okay, let's let's hide in the arcade. Bernard's just gonna hide in the arcade. Oh, hello, Dave. I forgot that I put you in here. Um, okay, so Dave, Dave is gonna. We found uh, a bit more food in the fridge. We found lettuce and old ketchup. Hopefully, this will appease the tentacle here. Uh, man, I can't believe that we set off the alarm. I was just trying to show you guys. I think that's so innovative and interesting. So if you get a, got a copy of this game from your friend and you didn't buy it then you could only play on like the first floor of the game. You wouldn't be able to get to the higher floors. So it's kind of like shareware. It's sort of like they were kind of giving you the option to try out the game. And if you like it, then you'd have to buy the full version. Or I guess, you know, photocopy the copy protection book, which is probably what you do if you have already have a, co a copy protection uh, or a, a copy of the game. Um, you know, you're a dirty pirate back in the day and you're just trying to steal it. Um, now I'm thirsty. Uh, we could give him the Pepsi. Uh, that makes me burp. How about we give you the jar of water? Pool water. Oh, he drank it. Sweet. We did it. Oh, man, I wish it was an option to talk. I just want to communicate with this guy. Can I explain my situation? Maybe he could help me. Uh, but I guess Dave is more interested in just doing with actions rather than words. Use your words, Dave. Use your words. And your psychic powers, file drawers, an enlarger, a desk. Wait, is this like a, um, a photography room, a dark room? Flashlight. Turn on the flashlight. Uh, looks like, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Well, one of the characters, um, he was, I think it was Michael, was the photography guy. So that would make sense. All right, what else we got upstairs? I think we have one more floor to explore here. Let's see what we got going on. 
<laughs> nice archway. It's like Satan himself. Like, who who was, like, shopping, and they were like, hey, you know that, like, busk of Satan's head? That would look really good over our door. They're like, yeah, Satan would look really good, wouldn't he? Let's see what we got here. Uh, open the door. Oh, open's a good option, Dave. Um, oh, this is, like, a radio? Let me turn this on. Um, I can't get it to work. It might be missing a part. Oh, bingo. Guess what? I know exactly who would know about fixing radios. He was hiding in the arcade. This guy, <laughs> he spent his afternoon or his evening here watching Seinfeld, hi hiding in an arcade and fixing a radio. It's like a nerd's paradise. It doesn't even matter that he's he's on a mission. He would have done that anyway, even if he wasn't on a mission to help save this guy's girlfriend. Okay, we are going to fix the radio with... I like how there's a fix button. Does fixing come up so often that it needs to be its own verb? Uh, the radio tube. Uh, it doesn't seem to work. Oh, man, what? I was sure that would work. Um, what is wanted poster? It, oh, wait, read the want, wanted poster. Wanted for terrible acts of violence, one murderous purple slimy meteor. If found, call 3412. Wait, the meteor was purple and slimy? That sounds like the tentacle. So is the tentacle the meteor? And if so, where did the green tentacle come from? Um, there's nothing to read out. Oh, what, what is this? Okay, Bernard. Oh, I like how he walks up the stairs. Doesn't even use his hands. I would like to see someone go up a ladder. Or the, uh, I said walk upstairs. It was a ladder. I'd like to see someone walk up a ladder where they're not, they're not using their hands at all. Oh, I'm so depressed. Oh, man, I'm never going to get my band started. His mom is a tentacle, too. My life is going nowhere. I'm never going to mount to anything. I feel bad for this guy. Eating all that food didn't help. I bet most of it was rotten. Um, Can we take his... The guy's depressed. So can we pilfer his room? Did I take it? I took his radio. Um, oh, I know. Uh, Use... No. Uh, yeah, we have a cassette tape. Put it in there. Boom. And we need someone. We need someone musical. Oh, we need the girl. Okay, hold on. Let's let's uh, let's send Bernard back downstairs to wait by the um, wait by the mailbox, and we're gonna send up uh, Roxy or whatever her name was to uh, come and make. She's gonna she's gonna help you, dude. Trust me, we got you back on this one. You want some music? We are gonna do this music thing. You're going to have a punk band. It's going to be awesome. Roxy and the Tentacle. Sounds like a like a Japanese like hentai uh, website. <laughs> uh, but no, it is a legitimate band. Get your minds out of the gutters, guys. I think if there was a band and one of the members was a sentient tentacle, they would automatically get booked at a lot of venues. It wouldn't even matter if their music was good, just for the spectacle of it. All right, finally, oh, it's Razor, not Roxy. Razor is going to have something to do. She's getting in on the action. Put me in the game, coach. I'm ready. Oh, look, we also, there's a dime here, too. Pick it up. It's going to give us some good luck. And let's go see what we can do with this tentacle, dude. I like how she climbs a ladder in the exact same way. Okay, he's depressed. How do we... Oh, Doorbell, doorbell, there's a package. It finally happened. Yes, take it, steal his mail, steal his Amazon delivery, and then run, run for it. I don't know what this delivery is. Again? Sucker, we got your mail, buddy. We got your mail. We got your mail. We got your mail, 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 mail. <laughs> Just run and run. Forget about saving the girl. We have a package. Okay, I'm going to hide him over here. I just don't want him to get kidnapped because that would really suck. Um, look, there's a key over here, too. She's going to pick that up. She's getting all the good stuff. Wait, 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 wait. Get out of the way, tentacle. Uh, pick up the yellow key. Yes. Poor guy. Does he notice his front door is just open and, like, his welcome mat is all turned upside down? Poor little bastard. I don't know what that package was. Let's, let's go to Bernard. Can we... Uh, read the package. Let's see what we got. To Weird Ed. That's it? No address? How, do, how did the Postal Service know where to go? There's only one Weird Ed in all of America. 
Uh, can we open the package? Open the package. Some uncanceled stamps came off. Ooh, I know. We're going to have to... Okay, we are going to have to mail in a demo tape here. I'm putting A and B together, and I'm coming up with D and an implied C in the process. Um, how do we actually use the right speaker? That doesn't seem to work. Um... How do we get an instrument here? How about, can we just turn this on? Turn on the stereo, it's blank. Hmm, okay, so we need to find an instrument, I guess. I guess that's the missing secret sauce here. Oh shoot, the door's locked. Uh, wait, I <laughs> I have the, this character has the key, I'm pretty sure. There we go, oh man, he got, imagine he got locked out. I would've had to call one of the other characters down to let him in. And how would the other characters know to do this? This isn't a time before cell phones. You know, in the era of cell phones, he could just text them and be like, hey, I'm outside, locked out, can you come open the door? Um, but before then, he w I guess he would have had to yell, but then how did the other, how did the Edisons not hear him? Um, I do not know. But we're bringing old Bernard back up here, and we're going to try this. Rather than fixing the radio, what if we use the radio tube in the tube socket? Boom! Now can we just use the radio? Does it work? Okay, it's implied to turn the thing on. Um, oh, sweet. We use the radio now? Use the radio. Oh, I don't know. I think there was a number on this thing, though, actually. Wanted poster. Wanted for murder and violence. One murders purple slimy meteor. 3412. I assume on a telephone, but we'll see if they take it on a radio. 3412. Boom! Does that, that do anything? Oh, it did. There's a cutscene. What what happened? What? This is the meteor police? There are meteor police? Just hanging out on the moon, eh? They look like they're from two completely different species. You found the murderous purple meteor? I'll be there in five minutes. Uh Oh, make sure the lab is unlocked. Uh-oh. We only have five minutes to unlock the lab? I have no idea how to do that. Oh, wait. Uh... Razor found a key. Maybe I can unlock the lab? Okay. Uh oh god. Let's let's get let's get her to the lab. Sorry, buddy. I can't help you record an album right now. We gotta go arrest uh arrest your friend. Where did the green tentacle come from? I'm so confused now. If the purple one is like an alien from space, where'd the green one come from? There's doors we haven't even explored. This game's getting intense. Get away from me, you purple slime! Don't touch me! You're about to go to tentacle jail, purple tentacle. Stop playing with the loud experience. This game is really dark, actually. It has a comedic tone, but it's really dark. He he he. Eek! Okay, so it's it's gotten even more imperative we save her because there's a tentacle that's literally trying to abuse this girl. We gotta save her, guys! We gots to! Oh shoot, we need someone to pull the gargoyle. Uh, Bernard, get your butt down here. Get your worthless butt down here. On my way. <laughs> Yuck. You know, an interesting thing about, uh, about this game is that when they were originally developing it, they didn't know what kind of genre they wanted this game to be. Um, and it wasn't until one of the developers saw his cousin playing King's Quest over Christmas that they got inspired to make a graphical adventure game. So originally, I think they, when they were developing this game, they kind of laid it out like a board game. Um, which would have been a total... That would have been very different um, if they had gone that route. Um, but no, instead instead we have this. We have um, we have a graphical um, adventure game. Um, and it is, it, is, it is actually like pretty easy to like play around with given that you don't have to like play around with the syntax. I feel like a Sierra game. Um, I have been looking a few things up here, but even, even at that, I've had to look up a lot less than I've thought. Um, simply because you can just click on things and kind of figure stuff out. Um, oh crap, this is the wrong key? Uh-oh. Um, it, <laughs> speak of the devil, maybe I should have looked that up. Um, okay, I don't know how to unlock the lab, actually, as it turns out. Another funny thing about this game is that originally they tried to program it all in assembly language, which, dear God, if you've ever done anything with assembly language... That is like, I don't even know how you would program this game in assembly language. Like, that's insane. We're just bringing all the characters down, by the way, because I don't know what to do with them. Oh, actually, we should explore these other rooms. 
Um, they ended up... Oh, God. Wait. Oh, God, she caught me. <laughs> I was going to look for at the chainsaw and the item. Oh, no, we finally got thrown into jail. How silly of me. I should have tied you to my bed. <laughs> oh, crap. So, poor old Dave here is now trapped in... Oh, God, there's a skeleton here. This does not look... Uh... <laughs> Secret lab. Oh. Oh. Hello. Is this. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe I inadvertently did something really good here. I'm pretty sure we can't just get out of here, though. Um, okay. There, I'm, there also, there's, this is fairly well known. There's a loose brick somewhere around here. And you can, like, pull it. And it will open the door to escape. But um, and it, when it, it's like the gargoyle. Whenever you move, it will close. So what you need is a second kid in here, and you can always get one of them out. So you can always have two of your three characters active. Okay. I don't think this guy had much ascent. Oh, wait. He has a silver key. Can I use the silver key in one of these padlocks? I feel like silver and gold. I can't unlock the door with this. How about silver key in the top padlock? Ah, damn. I, th I, I, it, that would have been too easy, I think. Too easy. Oh, Dave is contemplating his life choices. Oh, the, the police showed up. Hello. All right, let's get him. Um, the door is kind of locked there, buddy. How am I supposed to get in there? You'd literally teleport it onto the earth. Maybe next time. Okay. So we got to figure out how to unlock that door. I guess that's probably the end game. That might be how we complete the game. Um, so we're still probably a few steps away from that. I'm going to go ahead and take this tape because you don't need it. Um, but yeah, so not only did they try to program this game in assembly, but they realized that was a bad idea. And then what they did is they designed an entire game engine um, for this uh, game. The hope was that after designing the game engine, it could be used to develop later Sierra games. Um, and lo and behold, it was. It was uh, an engine that would power like Indiana Jones, uh, even things like Day of the K Tentacle and Full Throttle, like an upgraded version of the engine uh, later on. But yes, the game engine that started here with Maniac Mansion that delayed production for several months, actually. I think the first seven months of development, they really worked exclusively on the engine. But it would, it would uh, come to be known as the Scum Engine, which actually sounds for Script U Creation Utility for Maniac Mansion. So it is a game engine specifically designed for Maniac Mansion, but it would be used in all sorts of other Sierra adventure games. It's kind of funny how it stands for Script Creation uh utility for maniac mansion but it's used in like indiana jones and like you know monkey island and all sorts of other stuff but that's why all these sierra uh, not sierra uh lucas arts games have this sort of point and click interface they all feel very similar um it's because of that um okay so we're going to use the cassette tape in the recorder okay we're going to turn on okay it's recording now we're going to pick up the record because we don't want that. Oh, wait, turn it off. And we're going to pick up. Then, this is a very complicated process, guys. It is a lot of moving parts in here. Um, oh, wait, who had the record of the mating calls? Old record and record. Okay, use the record on the victim. Torla, turn on. There we go. <laughs> so the mating call to Tentacle was such high, so high pitched it shattered the vase. Follow my logic here. Follow the logic. Guess guess what we're now going to use this tape for. Think about it. Okay, there's only like one other spot we've seen a tape player, and there was something else in that room that we couldn't get to. Are you guys following me? You following this logic here? Because if you are, you know what's about to happen. And I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. So use our cassette tape in here. Turn on the cassette player. And... Bingo! Bango! Boongo! Cha-ching! Gee, that was close. Oh yeah, I guess it almost landed on me. I guess don't st stand under Rusty Key. Don't stand under the chandelier that's about to shatter. And this rusty key, by the way, will allow us to get our compadre out of prison. So, 
Um, let's let's actually do that right now. Let's go ahead and oh, this thing's still playing. <laughs> Man, if there was a sound that could shatter glass, I imagine that would not be something that you just want to casually listen to. Just stand in a hallway and listen to casually. Um, that could that could hurt your eardrums. I'm just speculating, but that could that could significantly hurt your eardrums. Um, yes. Uh, this game was also ported super widely. Uh, like, um, I, the, one of the last things that I think I haven't talked about yet is how it was censored on the NES version. Like, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned how I was uh, playing a censored version because they called me Tuna Head instead of uh, uh, Shithead. Um, but uh, I, I also like how it's so easy to switch characters. But the NES version, apparently there's two versions of the uh, NES there's uh, there's an action you can do a little later in the game that actually I, I'm trying to get to. I don't want to complete the video until we get to that one action, but there's an action you can do. And uh, once you do it, oh wait, I don't have the key. Oh wait, yes I do. Yes I do. Um, once you do it, um, it's a terrible thing that you can do. And the NES sensors missed it and they published the game like 250,000 units or something were sold. Then they noticed it and so they reissued a second version of the game. So there's two NES versions that you can find. Hey, is anyone locked in down here? Dave, what are you doing down here, bro? Oh, it's a long story. Well, I bet it is. Um, you know what we need? Is we need that gold key that, uh, that Razor has. Let's try this. I don't know if this is possible, but I think you're supposed to be able to do this. Because earlier on, if you get locked in the dungeon and you have no way out, you can sometimes pass keys so how about give yellow key to the grading no um i want to use yellow key in the grading yes did she do it no she didn't i think there's a way to pass items to different characters maybe i'm wrong maybe i am wrong so I thought that these two gratings down here, one of them you could actually like pass things back and forth to um, to any character who's locked in the dungeon. I guess you can't. Um, I'm not even sure if that yellow key is going to unlock anything down here. I mean, like, probably knowing my luck, it would actually unlock this door. Okay, since Razor is outside, I have an idea. Use doorbell. And go and stand over here. And so that one door had, was Edna's room. I'm pretty sure the next one or one of these is Bernard's. Or not Bernard's. Uh, oh, God. No, 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 no. No, run. No, you idiot. Oh, man. I was right. One of these other rooms. Are you an agent of the evil meteor? Or are you here to help me defeat him? Not talking, eh? Well, to the dungeon spy. I, I, what? I, I'll help you, dude. Oh, Bernard, use your words, man. Too bad you weren't on my side. I am! I will help you! Okay, well, luckily Bernard has that old rusty key. <laughs> like, it's, I, I like how they don't even bother searching their captives. Like, look how hard it was for me to get out of jail, buddy. Um, okay, we're just going to have to go do that again. Um, I want to try and get into uh, Ed's room while he's off checking his package. But I was on the right track there, guys. I was on the right track. Okay, Bernard's going to go and hide in this room again. And now we're going to switch to Razor. I guess what I figured out, you can press F1, 2, and 3 to switch between your different characters. It's actually super handy. Okay, so she's going to use the doorbell. And as she does that, we will switch over to good old Bernie here. Good old B-Dogs. And we'll give Ed a minute. Make sure he gets downstairs safely. It should be good enough. All right. So we have to be quick about this. Could be this door. Blink. Yes. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to steal his hamster because we're monsters. Now run. Run for your life, Bernard. Wait, let's actually run into the other room because we haven't seen this one either. Hopefully we don't get thrown in the dungeon to see. Ooh. Um, and Ed, like a sucker, is downstairs. Can't you read the sign? Now get out of here. I like how he doesn't throw anyone on the porch in the dungeon, but if you come into his house, you're going into the dungeon. Oh, there's like brain eyes. Um, ooh, look at this calendar. Racy, a Playboy calendar. 1972, though. Uh, Ted's death is circled. Oh, man, so is Ted dead? 
Let's let's pump some some iron. Hunkomatic. The Hunkomatic. Boof. 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 Bernard's beefing up. I think he's working out the courage to ask Razor out. I'm pretty sure he has a crush on her. Look at this mummy. A handicapped bathroom. All right, I'll bite. What do we got going on in here? Um, open the curtain. What? Good for Edna. Can we move this guy? Pick up. Pick up the body. <laughs> Can we just push him with a stick? I can't pick that up. Okay. Well, um, we've gotten pretty far here in Maniac Mansion. Um, there is still a lot left to do, actually. I just sort of uh, peeked to see, like, how much more there was to do. You know, would it be feasible to sort of wrap this up quickly? I think I would have to play a whole second part here. If you guys are, like, really interested in seeing a follow-up, um, I would consider doing that. But as far as at least uh, trying this game out for the Let's Play 1001 uh, game series... You know, like, what can we say about this game? Oh, look, it's like, uh, it's like Barbershop of Horrors. It's like a little, uh, alien plant. And they have their family photo with the green tentacle. So what is the red tentacle? <gasps> Ooh, looks like you might be able to use paint remover here, too. Oh, man, there's, there's so much stuff to do in this game. So much to discover and explore. Um, and so much fun to have. Um, this game is in the book 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. After playing around with it today, I can, uh, I can definitely say that I uh, completely agree. I think that this is a, a classic adventure game. It is the first game to use point and click, and it does so very smoothly, very smoothly. Um, it combines humor and horror, and the thing is that, like, even though the graphics are kind of dated, the interface holds up surprisingly well, and the puzzles and stuff are kind of timeless. So, like, honestly, if you like adventure games, I think you're going to have just as much fun playing this one as you would... Uh, uh, like a modern one like it's it's still got a lot of uh, appeal to it so yeah i completely agree that this is a game that uh, all adventure game fans must play before they, you die um, but anyway that's just my opinion what do you guys think do you have any fond memories of playing um, maniac mansion here is it a game that you and your friends would play after school like i did with hugo's uh, House of Horrors? Is it a game that you sort of figured out and could beat, or is it a game that you got stuck at and you just sort of enjoyed the the experience of, of trying to figure your way through it? Um, whatever your experience is, is... Oh, wait, is that the brick? Look, I think there's the brick. What is... Oh, no, it's a candle holder. Like, see that, like, little thing that I'm pointing at here? Like, the... What is that? I don't know. There is a loose brick here somewhere, guys. But anyway, whatever your experiences is, whatever your experiences is, whatever your experience was with this game, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. So please feel free to leave me a comment. And as always, guys, whether you've enjoyed the game, hopefully you've enjoyed hanging out with me. If you have, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, because I will be back soon with another video, and you don't want to miss out on that. Until next time, my friends, don't get locked in any dungeons in any mad scientist's basement like poor old Dave here. And otherwise, take care of yourselves. Alrighty. Peace. All right, don't worry. I didn't forget to show you the thing that Nintendo forgot to censor. We're going to go do it right now. All right, this is it. You want to see how dark this game can get? Okay, use hamster in microwave. Oh, he's refusing to do it. Okay, here we go. For real this time, use hamster in microwave. <laughs> oh, God. So I guess just Bernard had some qualms about this. This is totally within Razor's paycheck to do this. Yep. Nintendo did not notice this the first time through. Oh, God. That is cruel and dark and gross. And you can microwave a ham hamster to death. <laughs> oh, God. Blah.